let me follow up on research group meeting. That was on my list, uh, obviously. Uh, and it it was probably the highest ranked thing of every on on average in the media and whatnot. There was nobody who gave it a, a really you know lower than three score. Five was a high score. Um, a large fraction of the written comments came back talking about the real value of uh, a research group meeting in terms of honing uh, communication skills. As one one person said it from either side of the table, meaning as the presenter and as sitting in the audience, critically examining what was being done critically in a good meaning of the word critically not in the not the usual normal uh, negative connotation of the word critical I mean critical meaning detailed and analytical uh, discussion of the work uh, so that that's group meeting is really important um, and your participation in that's really important uh, and for instance when I get asked about communication skills, I'll comment that yeah, he really participated. She really participated in group meeting and, and you know helped get a lot of good ideas out on the table, and and presented well at group meeting. That's important. Um, you know, tr trying to get to meetings, whether they're on campus where you present a poster or orally. Uh, you know, Specialty meetings in your sub-discipline or national ACS type meetings, those are really good things. Um, I mean, I think everybody should make sure they give a formal talk in front of total strangers before they go out on a job interview. And, and, and practice, practicing in front of your group is important. But you have to learn to communicate to people who are not in your research group because they don't know the buzzwords. And as a faculty member, I, and I'm on oral exams, I, you know, I have to have people write down lists of acronyms. I don't know what these things are. Just like people not in my group don't know what this acronym or that acronym means. You've got to be able to communicate to people who are not really well versed in your subject. Because it's very unlikely that everybody at Ecolabs who's going to have two cents to say, uh, you're at Ecolabs, that's, you understand that, um, they're not going to be in your field. Maybe, maybe if you're lucky, a third of them will be in your field. But all of them are going to have input to whether or not you're hired. So you've got to communicate with other people. So, was it you who said you have to learn to communicate with your parents? Yeah, that was actually a, an interesting uh, observation out of the eight, probably a half said communicating with their family members, what they were working on uh, was um, something that they actually actively uh, did that they found very valuable. And one of them uh, then went on to point out, uh, my mother is a nurse and she knows a lot more science than any of our marketing people. Um, so, so there is this notion you will be de dealing with people who are scientific but have uh, less awareness of your subject matter uh, than you do. Uh, they don't write the checks either. The person who writes the checks is likely someone with an MBA for whom logical thinking has been repeatedly and consistently drilled out of his or her mind uh, as part of the marketing process as being anti-creative. So it is you know, telling a story, which is, uh, had another a student who talked about um, as part of one of the outreach programs, talking about what she did uh, to grade school students and how valuable uh, that was. And, and honestly, um, we hired that person and she, uh, she, she's from here recently. Um, and there was a little grade school orientation to her seminar uh, at Ecolab, which I told her was perfectly age appropriate or, or <laughs> it was perfect so her title was, was was sort of one that grabbed the attention etc but but yet kind of this notion of of being able to to talk about your work um, to a very uh, some someone very unskilled in the art is, is an important uh, important feature 
other thing I really want to read to you is a, a totally unsolicited comment from uh, a guy that, that Marty has certainly known for a while, Jim Brady. Uh, Jim Brady was a very early student of mine from here, so he's, he's not young. Uh, and Jim uh, was always outspoken, to say the <laughs> least. Uh, and he actually was interested in an academic career, and he started an academic career, uh, but his health got in the way, and uh, he had a family, and he just, it was, his, his doctor and his wife said, you've got you to gotta get out of this. So he's really spent his career in industry, so he knows what he's talking about here. Again, unsolicited. The focus of graduate school research is the development of a specialist working as an individual doing all aspects of the work on a specific problem, but industry needs many specialists working on a general problem as an integrated team. For new hires, this is the biggest transition from grad school. Remember, this was part of this symposium with the same title as this, Bridging the Gap. This is, this is the biggest transition from graduate school, is getting, not doing everything yourself, but becoming part of a team and working on different aspects of the project, but in an integrated fashion. And then, then in bold, underscored, he writes, a career killer if they still can't do this after 10 years. So that's, that's a big part of the bridging the gap, is the changeover from having responsibility for the work, because you're going to be examined on it, and you're going to be judged on it as whether or not you've achieved what we expect of PhDs, to becoming a real participant in a team. That, that's something that I, I don't know that we really teach or even try to teach. No, and there, there's at least some... Although the centers maybe have smoothed that out a little. I was, was going to talk about the centers. There, there's some sentiment that, that addresses that specific issue. It doesn't, based on my history. So there are individual students and uh, professors whose work is still relatively independent from a broader team aligned to the same subject matter, but not necessarily uh, collaborative in, in, in nature. Uh, the, that sort of research exists still in centers, and it exists with individual professor-driven research, and collaborative work the same. There are professors and students who are, are driven to collaborate, uh, both in terms of their personality, in terms of their awareness of what they want out of a graduate school experience, uh, and the research, uh, and there are those who tend to be more individual uh, contributors. By the way, these are none of these are absolutes. Do we have some people who are sort of focused on a specific area, and you go sort of tap them on the shoulder when you need, uh, hey, we need a latex polymer of this molecular weight that does, you know, this. Except if I'm standing on my head, it should do this, and then he or she goes off and does that. There is room for that. Uh, but that's generally not the hiring profile uh, we're, we're, we're looking for. So I, I think the centers are a step in the right direction in that regard, but it shouldn't be confused with the fact that there's many names associated with a center does not necessarily mean an individual, individual research project or researcher is working collaborative and learning, you know, getting the benefits of that collaborative work uh, in the spirit of what Jim's pointing out here. There's another comment uh, that I have written down here that I wanted to make sure you heard. Uh, and this involves the transition process, namely the process of interviewing for a job. Uh, need to be able to articulate clearly, concisely, and convincingly why the project was undertaken. An interview killer. You, you, what I, I think you've already said this in a, in, in a couple of different ways. Maybe you've said it more than once. You have to be able to explain why the work was done, not because you were assigned the project, but what motivated the work. And it's, it's not so much convincing them that what you did was important, but convincing them that you're capable of 
understanding why you did the work because you're going to have to convince people in the future and then this is not academic to fund the projects that you're working on and 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 to enable your boss to convince their bosses to fund the project that you're working on you've got to you know really understand why you're doing it and and, and do it clearly, convincingly, and concisely. And then they're trying to find out if you're capable of that during the interview. And if you don't convince them of that, you're, you're not going to do well as a result of the interview. <laughs>